Welcome to the Beauty and the Beat, the podcast that talks about everything beauty on the beaten track to happiness. I am your host, Sophia, and along with my wonderful co-host, Betsy and Amanda, we are bringing you some of our best conversations about life experiences on the journey to happiness and fulfillment. From life purpose through love lessons, career ups and downs, family, friends and relationships, we're here to share them with you. I hope you're ready for this wonderful journey with us, as we are so excited to have you here. Welcome to the episode two. Today, we are going to talk about confidence. What is confidence? I think it's such a broad term, so I turn to a dictionary to bring you a couple of ideas of what dictionary says. So first of all, it describes confidence as the feeling or belief that one can have faith or rely on someone or something. Secondly, it says it's the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. And thirdly, a feeling of self-insurance arising from an appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. For me, first and foremost, confidence is a feeling. Feeling of some sort of security. Security in knowing who I am, in knowing what I want, in knowing where I'm going and knowing I'm perfectly fine just the way I am. But as much as this could feel as an amazingly strong feeling at times, It is so very fragile, as many of us can know. I'm going to ask my lovely girls to say what confidence means to them. So what about you, Amanda? Sophia, when you came up with the topic confidence, I thought about a lot of things and I thought about, you know, what confidence means to me. And I came up with the fact that confidence to me is something that is innate, but it can also be developed. It is when we are 100% sure of who we are. We do not have to answer to anyone as we know we are sure of where we are heading. But also that said, I realize that confidence does not have to be egotistical and it's not trying to prove a point to someone else. It is knowing that you are sure of yourself in the moment. Yes, yes, 100%. Well, I'd like to add my bit on confidence. And for me... Confidence is about being comfortable in your own skin. I think it's about accepting yourself, having the freedom to do so, and you know, who you were born and meant to be. And also not needing validation, you know, or to have self-worth or being able to express yourself. I would say that it's definitely a feeling of certainty and self-assurance which arises from, you know, appreciation of one's abilities and qualities. I can also say that I believe it's about being authentic and acting with intention. And that acting is with a purpose, I would say, or a plan. It's intentional and it's the quality, I would say, of trusting. And it also for me is an internal and spiritual awareness. I believe that, you know, it's by a higher power guiding you. And letting you know that all things are possible. It's about being fearless, motivated, focused, and bringing out your creativity. Well said, Betsy. I love that. I love how you linked it with spirituality. I have thought about confidence being linked with spirituality because, as you said, it's kind of like self awareness or like being sure about something. And obviously, spirituality, I'm um, talking about universe and being taken care of from above, it comes with it as a belief. So yeah, absolutely agree with you on that one. Yeah. And I also feel that, you know, it's when you have that kind of belief, you have a trusting in which it's the feeling is, you know, truth, it's honesty, it's having faith, and it's also having patience. So there's a lot of things, you know, that for me, which comes with being confident I totally agree with Betsy on that. And I think confidence comes in all forms. And I think sometimes the way it's portrayed today, people kind of think in order to be confident, I have to be out there. I have to be bold. I have to just go into the world. And if I'm not like that, I wouldn't be accepted. But as I said, in my explanation of confidence, a lot of it comes from knowing who you are. Once you know who you are and you're comfortable with who you are, 
you don't have to be confident. You just are confident not, because it's right. not something. Yes, it's not something you have to be. It's something you are. You uh, yeah. hate, and it's part of you, and it just comes with knowing yourself more and being sure of yourself and avoiding those little voices out there from talking, talking things into your head. Those limiting beliefs. Yes. I totally agree with you, Amanda. Just as you were saying, I started thinking about when did I first start feeling confident and when did I first notice what confidence is and what it means to me. And I feel as us as children or young adults, we often turn to our parents or to somebody that's like a superior person to us at the time in terms of like for them giving us some kind of guidance or appreciation or some words of affirmations or something that makes us feel good about ourselves. So I think confidence, you probably are born confident in some way, but the words of reassurance from, from your parents, that is something that could either make you more confident and more stable in finding who you are, or it can completely shatter you. Sophia, I agree with you on that, but I have something else to say. Contrary to what you said, I think every child is born confident. I think it's the other way around. I think the parents and society take away and peel away that confidence because have you ever seen a two-year-old child they would walk into your house and you will walk and they'll ask you the strangest questions. They'll be like, what yes. is that? Yes, yes. Or they'll pick up mm -hmm. something and they'll be like, oh, so, you know, they're so bold. Or a three-year-old. And then yeah. you find the parents, you find the children where the parents are like, oh, shut up. Why are you asking auntie that? You can't do that. What? You shouldn't be talking like that. Don't talk. Instead of them directing, obviously the things we don't say in modern society but there's a way yes. to direct a child and say, you know, you can't say that because of this. When you yes. want to ask that yeah. question next time to an adult, this is what you say. But most parents will just break down that child right there. Go to the corner. Da -da -da -da. They don't explain. And slowly, slowly, they chip away at the confidence because you become consumed with what people are going to say what your parents are going to say what people told you not to do what will happen you know all these type of things I think I agree with society and your experiences chipping away at the core 100 percent. well said Amanda it's very true I totally yeah. agree that's, mm -hmm. that's when I started thinking like when did I start thinking about what confidence means to me or when did I start feeling confident and just as you were saying Amanda I just had these little snippets and flashbacks from my childhood me being like four-year-old storming into my great-grandmother's room that she was living with my grandparents and she was like well you didn't even knock and I was like well it's not your house <laughs> so I was a very bold child <laughs> very bold child but I think I was very extremely lucky growing up with my parents but mostly I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and my grandparents let me do basically whatever I want because I just had a gift of a gab and I, I was so confident in myself that, yeah, they let me do whatever I wanted. And on the other hand, now you make me think about what was undermining my confidence. And unfortunately, it was my dad and the way he spoke to me and how he made me feel about myself. And there was a lot of shushing, a lot of not nice language used towards me from him. Hence, that's why I chose to spend a lot of my childhood with my maternal grandparents. I think you've brought up a lot of emotions right here. And uh, it takes me back to my childhood. And, you know, like you said, Amanda, you know, we were all confident at some point when we were younger. But I think from my experience growing up, for most part of my childhood, I was bullied. So this led me, you know, I was told I was too ugly, too tall, too skinny. And this created a lot of insecurities in me and feelings of unworthiness, of being unloved, unvalued and abandoned because I had no friends. I was ostracized. I wasn't allowed to play. So it was a very stressful time. I was spat at, punched and kicked. So for me, as much as I had really positive moments in my childhood, I lost confidence very early on, which also led into my teenage years. And being shy also didn't help. So my parents did give me a lot of encouragement and told me to stand up for myself and never to give up and to go back out 
and fight for, you know, for my rights, for a place to be heard and to be seen. And I think about it, looking back, I didn't realize, you know, how resilient I was. And it left me as an introvert. So there had to come a time in my life where I tried to heal from those negative thoughts and beliefs. Those wounds followed me, and like I said, into my tea. And it got to a point where I needed to find my gain, my confidence again. So I had to have the desire to create new meaning in my life. For me, that was in being involved and placing myself in things that where I was able to express myself, you know, through sports and dancing and this everlasting longer need to travel the world and see the world. So in saying that, I had to do a lot of healing. And I did that through reading books because at that time, there were no platforms like there are today. So I read a lot of books. So Betsy, that was very interesting in your story because I think there's a lot of similarities in you know a lot of stories for a lot of young people growing up, especially for models because models tend to be taller, skinnier, and you know as they say, you know the ugly duckling that grows up into the beautiful swan. That's so right. Yes, it's the way right. of karma getting back. I mean, my journey to confidence is very interesting because I was always confident. There was no time I wasn't confident, but I, <laughs> you know. I'm not as confident as I look, though, because I think a lot of times, I think growing up with my father, my father was very, I mean, he died when I was really young, but he was very, very strict. And he was so, like any little thing, he'll just hit you, like any little thing. So you couldn't really be yourself, even Mm -hmm. though I must say he did allow me to just do what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like I was... You know, if I wanted to dance, sing, da, da, da. But the thing is, when he gets really angry, he would say really awful things to you. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you'll never succeed. You're never going to make it in life. You're never going to do this. But for me, it was the other way around because I think I just kind of built more confidence from that, almost like rebellious. Like, you know, when you're rebellious mm-hmm. and think, oh, yes, I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to show you, you know what I mean? So that helped me build the confidence. Maybe it's one of those things of like going against the grain, but that's right. Yeah. building the confidence that way was really good. But on the other hand, as this is about how we became confident, I think in my early teenage years, I was much more confident But the confidence actually started going down when I started modeling. And the fact that's very true. And I think that's Mm -hmm. what actually broke me. And it's and you know, the funniest thing about which I want to talk about here is for a lot of models, one thing I found about models, a lot of women that are drawn to this profession, I found out that majority of them actually come from troubled backgrounds. Like when I talk to a lot of models, there's always issues with parenting. I mean, but maybe Mm -hmm. that's the issue for a lot of people in general. But I feel like the modeling thing, it wasn't even other models that were breaking your confidence. It was the bookers. Because some of the bookers, especially when you had some bookers, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to be. But some bookers will literally take your confidence and rub it on the floor because they would be like, oh, so why didn't you get that casting? Or why didn't you do this? Or if you're not booking a lot, all of a sudden they don't send you on auditions anymore or castings Mm -hmm. because you've not been booking. Or you walk into the agency and you'll see them being all nice to this model because she's booking a lot of jobs. And this week they're not nice to you because you've not been booking for a while. So it's things like that, especially when you're a teenager, when you're really young, it's almost like they're breaking you down. Yes, and, right. Mm. You know, and then you also get that from, you know, then you have the bitchy stylists or the photographers that you go and do a job and they're just like treating you like, oh, yeah, just get that, put that on. And then you'll see them talking behind your back. Like, you know, because it's common for models, you know, where they'll stand there and, you know, maybe you're working with a bitchy stylist or makeup artist and she'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, her skin's so bad, you know, the, the, you know all that type of stuff. So I think the modeling industry was part of the what really broke down my confidence. Yeah, it's a very tough industry where you have to be really thick-skinned and that can be stripped in a matter of seconds by, like you say, with all the, the negative comments that can come from all angles, from the designers and so forth. It's very true. 
So your story was about through your, where your lack of confidence came through modeling. And like I said, mine was through bullying. So very different stories, but you know, we all, we have that share that common ground where our confidence was stripped from us. Sophia, you have anything that you want to tell us about yeah. that were well, you, in my you affected? Well, like I touched on it, the confident thing. I don't know. I think I was born, my personality is very bubbly. And I always have said whatever was on my mind that literally left my mouth, didn't think about it. And people thought I was really funny. So I really bagged on the funny girl story. So I was just being funny and making everybody laugh. And I have to say, I felt really loved all my childhood, but I didn't feel like I was good enough because I constantly was bullied, even by my own dad, about my weight. I used to think I'm like, I must be really fat or obese. And then I remember later on in life, I looked at my pictures from my childhood and I looked at the picture and I was like, why on earth did I think I was fat? You know, when you look at the picture and you have this idea of yourself, how you looked at that time when that picture was taken and you couldn't even stand to look at that picture. And then you see it years later, I was like, what was my problem? I was perfectly fine because you see it with your eyes later on and it's completely different. So my dad used to say very horrible things to me, thinking he's funny, like watching a cartoon and he started calling me the name of the fat character of the cartoon. So I was like great you just ruined that cartoon for me so for example we were watching little mermaid so i started calling him ursula and he called me ursula for like three years after that <laughs> you know what i mean okay. like this really shocking you then i got bullied just like you betsy i got bullied by boys at school they we used to do this waving in in the morning i'm uh, sorry in the beginning of the school year the boys would just find out my weight and then write it on the blackboard and stupid stuff like that so it was like, mm -hmm. it was just my way though, because that has created then like this issue for me. And I was so focused on it that I stopped seeing the good stuff about me. So when this change came, was later on in my adult life, I think I was around 24 when I started meditation and I got to meditation through a yoga class because I really enjoyed the body scan thing at the end of a yoga class. And then the girl that was doing the yoga class, I asked for the CD of the music and I just really started reading up about it. And then my feelings about myself started really changing and I started feeling the relationship with my dad, finding out that the stuff that he was saying was possibly just because he had some worries about my health or he wanted me to be attractive to the opposite sex or whatever he wanted to do with that but that just reflected his own things that he was going through and then I slowly started forgiving for all that nonsense that was going on and just realized that is his journey not mine and all I all I can do is just you know live my life learning all these lessons so that was the first step in my way to healing myself is actually going inwards rather than trying to get positive messages from somebody out there or somebody trying to build my confidence up. I have to start doing it for myself internally. But one yes. thing I do want to mention about confidence whilst we're talking about it is the fact that, you see, when confidence is broken down, it is sometimes so broken down that people tend to relive the exact things they're afraid of. So let me give you an example. If someone tells you you're not beautiful since you were young, you would spend most of your time, you might be confident at your work, but you might it might take you an hour or two hours before you leave your house because you're just worried about what people are going to say or how you look. And then you might become excessive about your weight. You might develop anorexia or bulimia, or you might just get very protective when people say anything that has to do with weight. So the thing about confidence yeah. is when people break you down or chip away at your confidence, it takes a little piece of you away. And that piece, sometimes you it's almost like trauma. You start reliving it and it's almost like you manifest exactly yeah. what you don't want to comprehend about. 100%, yes. I yeah, totally agree. Absolutely. And I feel that from many insecurities that I've had in my past, that I am still reliving them today. It is a, always a work in progress and it's something that I work on daily. And like you said, through meditation and, you know, reading, trying to constantly find myself, trying to repair those broken memory, you know, 
issues and negative thoughts. But that's, I guess, the journey of life. You know, you keep learning, you keep on, you keep on striving, you keep on moving. And that in itself is confidence. Okay, so one thing I wanted to say is mm-hmm. confidence has a lot to do with about love and how you love yourself. Because when you love yourself, everything happens. You would not even think about it. A lot of times we stop ourselves because we have preconceived ideas and notions. The notions you build up about yourself are not necessarily what others think. You have to quiet yeah. the voices and let your truth okay. come through. Only then can you be truly confident. Confidence can be built and it is definitely exists in everyone. You know what I'm saying? So brutish behavior is not necessarily confidence. You've just got to search deeper within you and accept yourself as you are. And the moment you do that, you start to realize that everything you thought that mattered doesn't really matter. And it just slowly, 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 you build confidence. You do. That's right. Yes. And if you're right, Amanda, and stop seeking love outside of yourself, because it really, truly is an inside job. As they say, do not look for happiness in a relationship or from someone else to to make you happy in a relationship. Try to focus on making yourself happy and then have someone join your life so you can share that happiness together. Because just like you said, Betsy, happiness is an inside job. So it is really down to you how you can turn these things around, how you can talk to yourself in another way that's going to make you feel more confident, how you can give yourself that encouragement that you would have needed someone else to offer to you at any kind of age, either if it's a younger age when you started struggling with it or later on in your teens, be that person that you are looking for to give you that encouragement. Be that person. Give yourself that encouragement. Love yourself unconditionally because the body that you have, the mind that you have, that is a vessel for your soul. So if you're kind to the body that you live in, and then to yourself in general, that really builds up your confidence, first of all, your happiness, how you see the world, and how you see your abilities and what you can do with yourself and with your life. 100%, yes, that's very true. Uh, Yeah, and that took me back, actually. It just reminded me of my divorce, where I think that had quite a, a devastating impact on my life. But as you said, you know, it is you within you. You are the person who has the strength and the abilities to conquer all. And you can, you do that through love, through self-love, through, you know, all the things you've spoken about already. So I completely agree. So going back to what we were talking about, confidence, another thing I wanted to talk about was just the, the fact that a lot of times we all have this notion that this is how confidence should be. Confidence comes in all shapes and sizes. And there is confidence and silence. I keep on saying that because in today's world, people think that confidence is only when people are out there and they're the ones that come into the room and talk over everybody. And you see, I've I've dealt with personalities like that. Like I'm sitting down and they're just like, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're confident. That could actually be them hiding behind the the loudness. Because ego. Or ego, yes, ego. Mm Mm-hmm. Because noise doesn't necessarily count as confidence. So to anyone listening to this, you don't have to be noisy. You don't have to be the loudest in the room to be confident. You just have to know and believe in yourself because there is power also in silence. And that's a really important thing that, you know, our voices come out differently. Not everybody has the same voice and not everybody is going to go out there and try and make people believe what they say it's like there's just different forms of confidence yeah a very interesting point there Amanda I believe that confidence has a presence you actually do not have to say a word in the room full of people for them to feel that you're confident because confidence is not arrogance let's let's make that clear being confident does not mean that you're arrogant being confident is being sure of yourself being sure of yourself to me means knowing where you're going, what you're doing, you're perfectly fine just the way you are, and you're no better than anybody else. Everybody is on the same level. That is confidence to me. Like, your energy introduces you before you open your mouth. And if people realize the fact, like, 
I do not want to be name calling, but you know, when people get into a power position and then they start acting in a certain way, that is such an ego driven presence that still means that they're confident in themselves, but it's a different kind of level to it, I believe. But what I would really like, like to be like, if I ever get in a position like that, still you have to have some gratitude. You have to know that you're not better than anyone else, but make your presence know through how you feel about yourself, not where your ego's at. Totally agree with you, Sophia. So confidence is a very subjective thing as well, because I feel like in today's world, a lot of times people will say things like, oh my God, she's so confident, or oh my God, he's amazing. And I think sometimes it's right, but a lot of times we tend to feel that that people are confident that have the qualities we wish we had. Now, that is not necessarily right or wrong, but what we have to realize is we, we, we are our own unique individual person. Because I've seen situations where someone will get up and talk and everybody will be like, oh, she's so confident. Yes, that person is confident. But that doesn't mean you're not confident because you cannot get up and talk. Maybe that's just not the way you express yourself. So that brings me to the case of confidence and expression as well. Because a lot of people relate confidence to expression and how we express ourselves. And yeah, there are moments that we all could cower back and maybe in a conversation or in a talk or something, we might feel like, oh, I can't say that. But a lot of times it's just the fear we built up inside ourselves and it has nothing to do with our actual confidence. So, you know, there's a book that's called Feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, I've had moments in my life where I've had to count to 10 and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do this. And I do it and I come out of it and I'm like, why was I so scared of that? And sometimes you just have to do it. I totally agree, Amanda. I mean, for me, even now doing this podcast, my biggest fear was to speak openly and publicly. So I set myself a task in life. I said, I want to be heard. I want to have a voice. And it's something I've wanted to do. And so by doing this, this has empowered me. It's given me the strength and the self-belief that anything is possible. I can do this if I put my mind to it. And that's the key thing with having confidence. If you put your mind to it, if you're committed, it can work out for you. And then, you know, and you have to have a, a driving force deep within you. And even if you don't get to the where you're meant to be, the journey, you will learn a lot, a lot about yourself through the journey. The fear is very unwarranted because a lot of times the fear is only something that we built up inside ourselves and has nothing to do with what anyone else thinks out there. A lot of times when you really face your fears, you're halfway through to being confident. 100%. Yes. Yes. You know, like I said, mentioned before, a lot of this had stemmed through my childhood and being bullied and always being the one that was ostracized and, you know, wasn't being heard by anybody. But in time, I've learned to overcome this. I have a place. Everybody has a place in this world. We all have a voice that needs to be heard or that should be heard because we are unique. Yeah, and there's audience for all of us. Just 100%. to what you said, Betsy, when you are not so confident and then you still do a task, nevertheless, like something even more difficult than just a task, if you conquer your fears, they say fake it till you make it, right? So if you get into the mindset that even through the fear, I'm going to do it, when you face your fears or accomplish a task that you thought was impossible for you, that on its own builds your confidence, makes you makes you stronger puts you in the place where you accomplish one task, then you set another task, you accomplish that too. So you're growing and going on that journey and building that confidence, building your self-assurance and building your self-love with the whole whole of it. Because if you feel like you've done something towards reaching your goal, the whole feeling about yourself is completely different. You get this like warm feeling inside, you start being very happy and that kind of links with like, you start appreciating yourself for conquering these tasks. Yes. I don't know about you ladies, but I've kind of started 
when I started this uh, confidence journey, as I said, I was 24 years old when I started meditating. And then once you get into that zone, when you're open to information that can help you grow, when you open up yourself to universal messages and things like that, you then start mingling with people from this amazing energy field. Like it kind of like opens a door and it floods you and suddenly there goes one person that says something to you that kind of resonates with what you were reading about. There goes a message that pops up on your uh, Facebook that is literally about something that you were talking about. So all of it kind of, when you start seeing things that are related to the things that you're learning, that's a kind of like a sign that you're going on a good path. My mom gave me a book when I was 24 that it had some like exercises in building self-love and I really 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 want to share this one exercise with you that was in the book and then going from that exercise I have put my own spin on it so but I'll start with the first one I want you and all our listeners to imagine yourself as a young girl or a boy it's a very individual age so whatever you imagine yourself younger version of yourself yeah so for me i'm a six-year-old girl so imagine this little girl or boy in front of you and try to say all of the stuff sometimes the negative stuff that you say to yourself in the mirror you know you know like these things that you think about yourself they're like bad like it is almost impossible to say it to a little helpless child isn't it and now imagine that you start saying the things that you really want to say to a child, like all of the lovely, lovely words of encouragement that you would say to a child, yeah? You want to hug the little child, the little version of yourself, and give yourself all the love that you have, all the love that you wish it was given to you, all the love that you feel like you deserve, but you're missing in your life. Like, I'm even getting a bit teary now because it's so overwhelming. It makes me want to cry every time because, like, I want to be that person to give myself that unconditional love. Yeah, so I cry, yeah, when I I think about this. This is like a part of a meditation. And it makes me realize that I'm not alone and I'll forever be loved and be loved by me and myself. And... I feel like this is like one of the most powerful self-love or healing exercise that you can do. And I always come back to it when I'm facing some struggles that whenever my self-love is being questioned or like out of alignment. And when I do that, I kind of get connected to the higher source, like to the energy that connects us all. So this is one of the exercises I started with my journey towards more self-love and confidence. That's an amazing exercise, Sophia. Because it's funny how that exercise comes back to the fact of what I was saying earlier when I was talking about how a lot of these things start from when we're really young and our parents, you know, instill these things in us. So it's so funny that you talk about that because that's exactly what happens when we're younger and, you know, parents exactly tell us like oh you're not good enough you're not this you're not that so you go back to that age and you start repeating that and you look at yourself, yourself you know and then it just grows and it just multiplies as you get exactly. older like it's engraved exactly. in you like oh you cannot leave the house without putting your hair like that you cannot leave the house without i don't know doing this and that what are the other people going to think about you if you're wearing that you know like all of these things how old were you when you imagined a younger version of you? nine Sorry. You, Betsy? I would say around the same eight, eight-ish, nine, yes. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I think it's very individual when, when you think about mm-hmm. your younger self, when you're being put in a position to actually think about yourself in a younger age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I'm six. But, <laughs> but one thing I do want to say is a lot of us have survived, even though this confidence journey is our spiritual and self-reflecting personal development journey. I feel like a lot of us go through this. And one thing I want to tell everyone out there is you're not alone. The funniest thing is that person you look up to that you think is so confident. If you talk to a lot of them, they'll tell you, I'm not confident at all. I'm just being me. I don't know why you all think I'm so confident. 
So sometimes it's not about them being confident or much more better than you. It's just that they are just being themselves and they're feeling the fair and doing it anyway. And anyway, 100%. So I think mm-hmm. one thing Sophia mentioned that really helps a lot of people is spirituality. I believe mm-hmm. whether you're Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, whatever you are, or even atheists, there should be something you believe in. If it's a higher power, if it's an arm consciousness, if it's just the universe, you know. I remember I, I started been chanting since I was 17 years old. And chanting, I would say, has been the one thing that has helped me break beyond. Betsy is my witness. Betsy. One hundred percent. I'm with you. I turned to uh, yeah. I started chanting. Yeah. Amanda introduced me, and I cannot yeah. thank you enough for bringing me yeah. on that journey with you. Chanting changed my life. I mean, I want to say on this podcast today, I'm sitting here while my enemies are rolling in the middle of quicksand. I don't even know where they are because I did the unthinkable <laughs> to a lot of them. And so, when you have spirituality of some sort, what it is is there's something that we talk about in chanting. They're like faith practice and action. So, you know, you have the faith, which includes having the faith Mm -hmm. in yourself. You practice, which is your spiritual practice, and you just take action and know that you're protected by the universe. And I am telling you, I was protected time and time and time again. And yes, life is full of sufferings, which we all know, because you will go through challenges of life. Everybody does. Even, you know, the wealthiest people, the most confident people, You know, the most beautiful people go through challenges, but you will overcome it. So I feel like everybody needs an anchor. And if it's not family, like your parents and stuff, you have to find some spirituality or read a lot of books, personal development, do something. And that's why personal development in today's society is such a big thing. Every time I switch on YouTube, someone is trying to sell me a personal development course Mm -hmm. because we're finally realizing that is the key to opening up who we truly are. I 100% Amanda, well said. And you know, there was something that you touched up upon that made me realize, you know, you said something about we are here today. And that tells us in ourselves that each and every one of us, we've had issues along the way, but we are still here today, which means even if it what we didn't recognize it was through confidence, we have managed to get through it. And we are here today, we're talking about it. And for most part, we are all right. And we are still on our journey. And you're allowed to share your journey with our wonderful listeners. So I feel completely grateful for it, that we are able to touch someone's life, maybe somebody that's, that's going through a tough time with their confidence or self-love and that's what we're here for to share our stories so that you know we can help someone with the knowledge that we gathered throughout our journey exactly I and just even through t- telling our own stories and and so forth yeah, yeah. so one thing i want to i you know what i was thinking of is i condensed everything for me personally so To anyone out there listening that's thinking, how can I build confidence? Here are a few tips that I've condensed personally, and I want to reach out to Sophia and Betsy as well to tell me what their tips are. So these are my tips. Number one, affirmations. There is power in affirmations. Create affirmations for yourself. You don't even need to find affirmations. Make your own up, create them, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. make them. I mean, one of my favorite affirmations is, I am beautiful, powerful, famous, healthy and a badass billionaires. That's my best attitude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm loving that. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. another thing, meditation, whatever meditation is to you, whether it's chanting, whether it's going to church, whether it's dancing, whether it's just walking through the park, whatever it is to you, playing with your kids, spend more time doing that. Thirdly, feel the fear and do it anyway. Most people actually think you are more confident than you think you are. And don't overreact even when you are afraid. Don't overreact. Don't clamp up. Just take a deep breath deep into your diaphragm and just keep on going. And always stand up for yourself. Stand up for yourself even when you think you can't. Because most people are cowards. And if people try to intimidate you in any way, stand up for yourself. Let your voice be heard. And there is power in silence. 
sometimes. So those are my takeaways. Wonderful. And embrace everything, you know, including your flaws. I would suggest to some of you to write them down and to let go of those judgments and know that even having those flaws is being part of who you are, but that's okay. You can still move forward. There's still space for you to, and room for you to do the things you want to do. I would also say to, you know, that to stop seeking your confidence outside of yourself or from other people, know that you are enough. Amanda touched on, you know, having your mantras. I have my mantras of my own that I used to say, and I'm going to say them as well. So I'm going to tell you, start with, I'm, I'm the same. I am beautiful. I am kind. I am honest. I am giving. I'm committed. I'm loyal. I value people, you know, I am friendships. I'm loving. I'm full of light and I'm powerful. Not to mention also I'm fun. So I'm beautiful. It's, oh yes, I that was that was my first mantra. Yes, that's what I always start off. I've been constantly asked a question uh, on my Instagram or being sent a DM by another woman saying, Oh, I wish I was as confident as you. I wish I how did you get so confident? And it is a lot of work internally because once you become a model or like you're in public eye and you could get scrutinized and this and that and you need to grow a tough skin you know like you touched on when it comes to the industry when it comes to the industry you basically if you fit the vision of a client that's when you get the job because 90 percent of the time you're you're not going to fit the complete vision of the client so try to not to take things too personally and i say this with all my love in heart because I am the most sensitive person I actually know. <laughs> so a lot of times I take things quite personally. Yeah, I just want to touch on it just to say to everybody, you, you know, to be, live a fulfilled life and fully and make sure you give your energy to living your best life. We, ha- we only have one life. We must make it the best that we can possibly can. I totally agree with that. You know, you only have one life, make it the best that you can and just be confident, be you. Like, Confidence is a word that people created. But it's also a feeling. It's also a feeling, but we are all confident in our own ways. And when we start feeling like we're not confident, it's usually because we're feeling like the outside is coming on the inside, like somebody is judging us or we feel like we will be judged. So my point of view is just be yourself, create your tribe and everything else will shine work itself out. Mm-hmm. Shine bright like a diamond. So, yeah, as I said, confidence is a lot of internal work. And I would really like my message to be especially for women that struggle with body confidence because that is, or that used to be my biggest struggle growing up. And I know there's a lot of us out there that are struggling to find that way to your body confidence. So I actually came up with like three step exercise to build your body confidence. Yes. I call it the Hey Sexy exercise. And I want you, our lovely listeners and my lovely girls, Amanda and Betsy to do this exercise with me. Yeah. So every time you walk past a full length mirror or uh, actually let's put it this way allocate a mirror in your house that you like, um, that is good for you, yeah? The the mirror, we all have our favorite mirrors, yeah? Allocate your favorite mirror in the house and every single time you walk past that mirror, you look at yourself, wink at yourself and say, hey, sexy. You're not allowed to say anything else or think anything else about yourself, but hey, sexy. Practice this for about a week. Yeah, when you feel very comfortable, I mean, seriously, this is like magic because every single time you leave the house, guess what's going to happen? People are going to think about you that you're sexy, no matter what size, no matter what <laughs> hair color, no matter what eye makeup, no matter what clothes you're wearing, it's going to radiate out of you like crazy. Yeah, then it gets a little bit deeper. Try to do this in your underwear, yeah? That's week two of the exercise. Every time, well, you're not going to walk past that mirror every time you're underwear, but every time you're in your underwear, you have to step in front of that mirror and really check yourself out and say, hey, sexy to yourself. Now, keep doing this until it feels like, yeah, you definitely are. 
basically your sex life is going to get a hell of a lot better after this exercise. And then the last part of the exercise is actually do it naked. Yeah. Say these, hey, sexy to yourself when you're naked. But by the end of all of, I think it's like, I would like to say like, this is like a month exercise. So you pick whenever you're comfortable from just saying, hey, sexy, fully close to going to the underwear and then to go into the naked stage. It is very personal. It could take, I would say, I would like to do it in a month, but you can extend it based on how comfortable you feel and watch what's going to happen. So that is, I would really love somebody that is listening to this, that, that this resonates with you to do this Hey Sexy exercise. Yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, every mirror I will pass him, <laughs> actually in the house, I'm going to be like, Hey Sexy. Hey Sexy. Yes. Okay, let's practice it. Let's practice it, everybody. Hey Sexy. Hey Sexy. How you doing? <laughs> and I guess I, I really like that exercise because a lot of people listening, you don't have to use the word sexy. It could be for anything, I guess. If you're trying to get smarter, you could be like, hey, brilliant. Hey, smarty. Hey, smarty pants. Hey, brilliant. Hey, you know, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be for sexy, I guess. So yes. empowering, whatever empowering words you want to use. The reason why I chose Hey Sexy is basically it's a body reassuring thing because it doesn't have a size in mind. It doesn't have anything specific. You can say Hey Beautiful to yourself if, if that's what you want to do. Obviously, sexy for me is like something that makes me feel good about myself. And obviously, because I'm a curve model and I do a lot of lingerie stuff, I do want to feel like that most of the time. So this really works for me. But as Amanda said, whatever it is that you want to feel more comfortable and confident about, feel free to replace that by the word sexy, by the word that really resonates with you and that the way that you want to feel. But I think it's important to keep repeating that word on multiple occasions, but then you feel free to switch it to another word if there's another word that you want, want to work on further down the line. Yeah, because I think what the mirror does is it's kind of like affirmations, but it reminds you every time you see that mirror okay. to say that affirmation. That's you see right. what I mean? Right. So it's kind of reminds you, like, say it now, say it to yourself. And I really, really like yeah. that exercise, Sophia. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I should copyright it, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. So, um, you know, I'm, watch it. If Oprah calls me, yeah, this is what I've said. I mean, what day is it today? The 12th of May 2020. So, here we go. I said it first. <laughs> yeah, you said it first on Beauty and the Beat. So, just before we leave you guys with this session, I also wanted to talk about, you know, because obviously we're trying to cover a lot of things on this show. We're talking about confidence today and we're talking about finding your inner confidence and I know some people are also not confident not only because of body image also because of the way they look and mm -hmm. I want to tell you something the way you look has nothing to do with your confidence so don't let it stop you from getting the things you want in life but before we finish I also wanted to touch on a final thing about children and building confidence in young adults and building confidence in children. Sophia and Betsy, do you have any tips, especially you, Betsy, because you're a mother, do you have any tips you would give to mothers out there on building confidence in young adults or little children? And how would you go about it? Well, yes, being a mother myself, uh, I have this battle <laughs> constantly and daily. <laughs> With my daughter, I've actually bought her a lot of books on confidence. I've also, we sit down, I encourage her to be open and honest with me. And I also allow her to express herself. And, you know, one thing with children is allowing them to be who they are and to be able to express themselves in a way that is natural, you know, to them. I also get my daughter to say her own positive affirmations. And I encourage her to look at the world honest and openly as possible. I like that because there's only so much children can process also when they're younger. So, you know, trying to build that confidence in a kind of non like 
forceful way, for a way. Yeah. subtle way is probably one of the best ways, you know, to work it. I, and I really, allow your child to be able to come to you, allow your child, like I said, to talk to you, to be able to express. I think that is the key thing at, at such a young and vulnerable age. I just, from my own childhood experience, I would hope that once I become a mum, I'll watch the way that I speak to my children. Because there are things that a parent might say in the haste, and I know that, you know, we're not superhumans or supernatural people, that, you know, there's times when our language slips, and then we just go from... I don't think parents necessarily say things from a bad place, but when they're not in a good place, they might say certain things to the kid that might resonate. Because I still, to this day, remember, like, as I mentioned, the hurtful things that my dad said to me, and he probably was just joking and didn't really mean it to offend me. But I would love to be the parent that kind of, like, is very kind and generous to my kids and try to more than undermine their confidence is build their confidence. So I think it's just... Try to work on yourself so you're in a good place when you're with your children so that, you know, whatever you communicate with your children is not going to be the reflection of the issues that are necessarily going on at that moment. So, Betsy, that was really interesting. I like the way you work with your daughter and help her build up her confidence in very subtle ways daily. You know, because I think that's very important for a lot of parents, especially. And I think one thing that happens is a lot of parents are at work most of the time. So they don't have much time with the kids, except in the weekends. And half the parents just want to get things done in the weekends. You want to sleep in, you want to go this. And they don't have time to really sit with their kids and help them build confidence and find out what's going on in their life. That's right. I, I, that's right. I have one more tip for you, parents. What I also do with my daughter is that we write messages to each other so we leave messages around the house for each other just of things that you know we share our love we express ourselves we say kind things to each other we 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 remind each other of our bond and our love and our togetherness our our life so that's something maybe oh i really love that i I really really love love that i love that that. i used to write little messages and leave the in her lunchbox for example i would write Mm -hmm. a little note Remember to shine bright like a diamond, for example, or, you know, the world is your oyster. Be Mm -hmm. kind. So little things like that, just to keep them going, keep them motivated. Love it. Every time I visit my mother uh, back home, before I leave, I'll write a bunch of I love you notes on a post-it and I place them randomly in her drawer, in her diary or something that I find. And then, or like in the, Mm -hmm. I put it on a a sticker door in the bathroom or something, you know? So, and then I do that usually when she goes to get the car and I'm on the way to go to the airport. So she doesn't have a way to to see it until I'm gone. Yeah, that's really good. Because one thing we're getting at here is, that confidence also depends a lot on love because, you know, I feel like what we're getting at here is where there's love, confidence exists. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because, you know, people that come from very, very, you know, loving families tend to be more confident, I find, you know, as well. Because very true. They feel, they feel that like, sense of security. Yeah. Exactly. Someone's got their back. So mm-hmm. confidence can also be built in so many different ways. We're learning other ways, you know, like through family. and. But that said, you could also bring it through strong friendships. and 100%. And the tribe that you surround yourself with. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a great conversation, ladies. I'm loving this yes. confidence thing. And very, very it, much. Has, it has opened so many more discussions we're going to be having on the other episodes coming, you know, and... I hope, you know, listeners out there can, you know, take a lot from this. And don't forget, you can always talk to us on Instagram, Twitter, and all the social media. And Sophia? Yeah, well, I just really want to thank both of you for sharing your stories and for opening up to our listeners. And I, I really really love this conversation that we had here. It's kind of like a healing session for me every single time that we record the podcast. And I do really hope that we were able to help some of you that are listening and we will do our best to bring you topics that, you know, we feel passionate about. So that passion transcendence into this podcast so that you can feel 
how we feel about certain things and you know down the line um we would really like to get ideas from you for our topics if there's something that you would like us to discuss because we are here for you Yes, and I just want to add just a simple uh, and uh, um, sentence from me is to shine bright and never dim your light. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed our discussion today and we look forward to you listening to us and tuning in soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.